Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Minnesota Sports HQ. I'm Ben. We got the conference finals prediction preview type thing today. Uh, we got the boys repping, and uh, I couldn't get a guest on, but you know what? Um, sometimes two is not better than one. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoy my analysis of these games, and uh, we'll see you in the video. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, let's get into the pick zone and, uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to start with the AFC side of the bracket first, which is the Jacksonville Jaguars against the New England Patriots. I am going to divide my grades kind of into seven categories, the quarterbacks, running backs, wide receiver, and then the offensive line, four on offense, and then we're going to have the uh, defensive front four, we're going to have... Uh, the linebackers, and then we're going to have the cornerbacks and safeties. Uh, so those are the seven things I'm going to divide it up to. That's more than I did uh, last time where we just looked at the quarterback, running back, rest of offense, and then the defense. Uh, so we're upgrading the analysis a little bit uh, by almost double, but we also have half the games, so that's about equivalent to what I did last time. Um, so let's get started. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the New England Patriots. And uh, coming into this, the Jaguars have a 23% chance of reaching the Super Bowl. And they're giving New England a 77% chance of beating the Jaguars. Now, I feel like this is a little bit harsh. Um, you know, the Jaguars aren't horrible. Well, obviously they're not horrible. They made it to the Final Four. They just beat a really good Pittsburgh team. Uh, although Blake Bortles played out of his mind. Um, the main problem I see with the Jaguars is the fact that they're inconsistent. I mean, they lost to the Titans twice this year, but then they beat Pittsburgh twice this year. I don't know. It's just it's just kind of weird, isn't it? Um, but you know what? Sometimes that can be a good thing in the playoffs because the Patriots aren't going to know which team to expect. I mean, ideally you're going to expect the team that's playing really well, but you never know what you're going to get out of Jacksonville. And uh, that's actually kind of terrifying. Um, so let's start off with the QB matchup. We have Blake the Snake Bortles versus Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady's actually listed as questionable with uh, a hand injury. Um, and that could be uh, the chance that the Jags need. I mean, if he's not playing his best with an injured hand, I really do think the Jaguars have a chance to win this game. Um, but obviously Tom Brady is better, uh, and, you know, he's just done so many things in his, what, 18 years with the team, and Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft, they're, they're just the deadly trio there. Um, now moving on to the running back position, though, uh, Jacksonville is really strong in this department. They have Leonard Fournette, then they have, uh, Chris Ivory and TJ Yeldon as their third options. I, I, I mean, I think TJ Yeldon could be a starting running back. Uh, you know, anywhere in the, in like a bottom half team, like, I mean, Chris Ivory was a starting running back for the Jets, I mean, they, they all are incredibly good, and that's versus the Patriots, who right now, at running back, have Deion Lewis and Rex Burkhead, now, don't get me wrong, Deion Lewis and Rex Burkhead, I mean, they're, they're okay, I wouldn't say they're as great as Jacksonville, so I am going to give that one to Jacksonville. Now, uh, let's do the wide receiving core, and uh, I am going to include the uh, tight end in this one. So right now, for the Patriots, Brandon Cooks, Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan, and uh, Philip Dorsett, or Kenny Britt, depending who wants to play, and then, of course, Rob Gronkowski. That, that's a pretty strong team, but, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Jaguars have Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook, Alan Hearns, and I, 
thought they had one other person. Well, I mean, they have Mercedes Lewis at tight end. Um, I, I'm really struggling this with this one. Um, I mean, Marquise Lee, Dee Westbrook, and Alan Hearns are all incredible. But I think I'm going to have to give this one to the Patriots uh, just because of Gronkowski over Mercedes Lewis. But, um, I mean, the Jaguars are very close to being, you know, almost level on this one. So right now it's 2-1 to New England. And uh, let's, let's look at the rest of the offense. Like the offensive line, the Jaguars have Cam Robinson at left tackle, Patrick Omama at left guard, Brandon Linder at center, A.J. Can at right guard, and uh, Jeremy Parnell at right tackle. Now, that's a pretty good group of guys. Uh, they haven't been affected by too many injuries this year. And uh, Cam Robinson out of Alabama last year was a great pick in the draft, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, actually, I think uh, the Jaguars group is a little bit better than the Patriots. They got Nate Solder, strong guy at left tackle. Uh, Joe Tooney, Tooney uh, at left guard. David Andrews at center. Shaq Mason at right guard. And uh, Cameron Fleming at right tackle. Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, the Jags on this one. And, uh, you know, surprisingly on offense, it's 2-2. Uh, now let's get on to the defense. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the defensive ends here. Uh, Patriots uh, have uh, Eric Lee and Trey Flowers. And uh, those are some pretty good guys. Um, Lawrence Guy and Malcolm Brown line out, or fix up the uh, rest of the defensive line at D-tackle. And then uh, for the Jaguars... They're very strong. They have Calais Campbell up there in the middle. And, uh, excuse me while I get to their side. Um, okay, so at DN, they have Calais Campbell and uh, Yannick Ngakwe, who are both incredible. And even as a third option, Dante Fowler Jr. is an absolute beast. And uh, at uh, D-Tackle, they have Malik Jackson. And at Nose, they have Avery Jones with uh, Marcel Darius a backup for both of them. That's actually a very good D-line on that side of the ball. Uh, so I'm going to have to give that one advantage to the Jaguars. Now, looking at the running back, looking at the running backs, excuse me, uh, Telvin Smith, Paul, Puz oh, Paul Puzlesny, Miles Jack for uh, Jacksonville, and that's compared to... Uh, James Harrison, Kyle Van Noy, and Elandon Roberts. Um, I think I'm going to give this one to uh, the Patriots. James Harrison and Kyle Van Noy are absolute bosses of the game. They know what they're doing. Uh, so right now, it's 3-3. This is all going to come down to uh, the secondary. So for the Patriots, they have uh, Stephon Gilmore, Malcolm Butler, and uh, Johnson Batamosi out there at cornerback. And then they have uh, Patrick Chung, Devin McCourty, Brandon King, and Jordan Richards out there at safety. Uh, looking at the Jaguars, though, strong competition. Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boy, Barry Church, and Tishon Gibson. Um, Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boy have been incredible. Actually, A.J. Boy has only given up one touchdown against him for the entire season, and uh, Aaron Colvin at third choice cornerback is a very good option there. Oh, this this is honestly even. Like, if I could give a tie, I would, um, but I can't do that. Um, I'm going to say that uh, Jacksonville has a little bit stronger cornerbacks, but New England has better safeties, and... Uh, in this game, I really think uh, the cornerbacks are going to play a bigger factor. So I'm going to go with Jacksonville to win the final round. So Jacksonville wins 4-3. And uh, that agrees with my prediction. Not only because, I mean, I picked, oddly enough, somebody asked me what Super Bowl I would most want to see. And I'm pretty sure I said Vikings and Jaguars, like middle of the season, maybe week seven, something like that. And he, he just kind of laughed. And I'm just like, I mean, it could happen. And... It definitely could. I'm really rooting for the Jaguars here just because I could not stand to watch Tom Brady in another Super Bowl. I would be so upset. 
But uh, so I'm gonna give the edge to Jacksonville on this one. And uh, now we're gonna look at the uh, NFC. And once again, we're doing quarterback, running back, uh, wide receivers, and tight end, and then the offensive line. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we're gonna do D line, linebackers, and then the secondary. So let's get straight to that. Uh, obviously, Philadelphia, without their star quarterback, uh, they only have Nick Foles and Nate Sudfeld. So if Nick Foles goes down, we could be in, in for a real treat as far as what could happen. And, uh, I mean, Minnesota with Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater. Well, Teddy Bridgewater's inactive, but, I mean, I guess we got Sam Bradford. Uh, I think we got the advantage uh, at... Uh, quarterback position. Looking at running backs, though, Philadelphia has LeGarrette Blunt, Jay Ajayi, Corey Clement, and Kenjin Barner. That is an absolute stacked running back position, whereas, I mean, we have Latavius Murray, Jarek McKinnon, Mac Brown, and CJ Ham, though. Uh, that's pretty good, but I do have to give the edge to Philly there. So after two, we're tied 1-1. One, one. Now, let's look at the wide receivers here, and this is a really interesting one because Adam Thielen is listed as questionable for this game. Uh, so I'm going to kind of pretend he's normal. Um, but actually, that could work to our advantage because Philadelphia is going to have to come up with two defensive schemes depending on whether or not Adam Thielen plays. And, uh, I mean, tough to plan for him, that's for sure. But Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs, Laquan Treadwell, Jarius Wright, Michael Floyd for the Vikings, plus Kyle Rudolph and David Morgan at tight end. That's a strong tight end pairing. And as far as what the Eagles have, they have Elshon Jeffrey, Torrey Smith, Nelson Aguilar, Mac Holland, and Marcus Johnson. Now, I think the Vikings have uh, the better 3, 4, and 5 um, wide receivers for sure, but really what's holding me back here is uh, Adam Thielen not being 100% sure. Um, so, but I am still going to go with the Vikings because I think uh, we're just very strong. And uh, Oh, I forgot to mention the, the tight end. Wow, they have Zach Ertz and Brent Selleck. That is, that's insane. Uh, very good tight ends, but I'm still going to go with the Vikings. So 2-1 Vikings going into the offensive line at left tackle. Oh, boy. Halapulavati Vaitai. At left tackle, holy cow, Stefan Wisniewski at left guard, Jason Kelsey at center, very good. Uh, Brandon Brooks, uh, right guard, and Lane Johnson at right tackle. That's a pretty good line. Uh, Minnesota, though, having Riley Reef and Rashad Hill at left tackle. Jeremiah Searles at left guard, Pat Elfline at center. Uh, not sure if we're going to have uh, Joe Berger, Berger um, back at right guard, but then... Mike Remmers at right tackle. Those are pretty even lines, but I think I'm going to have to give the edge to the Eagles here, um, especially with uh, uh, Jason Kelsey there. Uh, I think they have a little bit of advantage there. So it's 2-2 once again after the offensive positions. Now uh, let's go to the defense. And I think uh, this could be really interesting because both teams have had incredible defense this year. Uh, so let's start with the Vikings. We have Daniil Hunter and Everson Griffin at DN, Tom Johnson and Linval Joseph in the middle. And that's compared to Vinny Curry, uh, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, and uh, Timmy Jernigan, who I've never heard of, but... Uh, the other three are absolutely incredible. And that's not even including Chris Long, who is by far incredible. Um, so I'm going to give that one to the Vikings, though. But uh, looking at the linebackers now, um, the Eagles have Michael Kendricks, Donnell Ellerby, who is questionable, uh, and is their only middle linebacker, um, and Nigel Bradham. Uh, and that's compared to the Vikings trio of Eric Kendricks, Ben Gideon, and Anthony Barr. Um, what on earth? Uh, that is that is a really good lineup, and I'm going to go with the Vikings on this one. Um, and since, uh, to make this more fair, I'll give the Eagles the defensive line one. So 
technically it's still three three, um, or three and a half to two and a half if we call, if we want to call it a tie. But you know what? Let's get into the secondary. The Vikings have Trey Waynes, Terrence Newman, Xavier Rhodes, and Andrew Sandejo is questionable. Jaron Curse, Harrison Smith, and uh, Mackenzie Alexander will not be playing. Uh, that is a very strong lineup. Waynes and Rhodes have been by far the best two corners in the game this year. Uh, Santeo has been monstrous. If we lose him, that could really play an effect to how we do on Sunday. But Harrison Smith is absolutely incredible, and I can't wait to watch him absolutely boss this game. Uh, now for... Well, now for uh, Philly... They have Ronald Darby, Jalen Mills, Patrick Robinson at cornerback, uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod and Corey Graham at safety. Those are very good options, but I still don't believe that uh, that qualifies quite enough to the status that Minnesota is at. And uh, I believe Minnesota will win this game anyway. So my Super Bowl prediction, as it was in week 5, 6, or 7, Vikings versus Jaguars. I will be so pumped if that happens. I Really, let's be honest. Um, I mean, I would really like to see that matchup in the Super Bowl at home for Minnesota. Um, so those are my picks for that. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about, though, is the MLS had their draft today. And uh, Minnesota picked up four players. Um... Two of the main ones were, uh, well, let, let me get it up real quick. Sorry about this. Uh, basically, the two main players we got were uh, Carter Manley, a strong defender, and uh, Mason Toy. So, um, two good picks there. Uh, I haven't watched much of them, but, uh, you know, they sounded really excited to come to Minnesota, and... Uh, I will be doing a Minnesota United SC preview video coming up soon. But uh, that's it for the conference finals video. Uh, comment your thoughts in the comments and uh, tell me if I did anything wrong here. I mean, I know I didn't evaluate the kickers or punters, but I kind of looked at it and pretty much every team um, kind of has good kickers and good punters. I mean, that's why they're here. Special teams mistakes are huge in early rounds of the playoffs. As the Vikings found out with a blocked punt. But uh, we survived that and now we're still here. So uh, that, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Sorry for such a long video. But uh, hope you all enjoyed. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. And we got a good video tomorrow with uh, college hockey. Uh, the Wolves, I believe, are playing. The Wild and... Go for its basketball so we got a good episode tomorrow i will be at the crash dice event in saint paul um so i mean i'm gonna do a vlog for that and i'll probably re release that on like monday or something but uh that's all for now and we'll see you later thanks everybody for watching